Guardian Show. My name is Doug Ray, and it is all about the health, wealth, and freedom you need to live life your way. Folks, I've got a great show for you today. I'm really excited about this. Uh, Our guest today is Lawrence Kotlikoff. He's a professor of economics at uh, Boston University. He is world-renowned in the field of uh, economics. He's written many, many books. I have studied his work a lot. Uh, We're going to talk about his new book today. Uh, It's Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. He's also an expert on uh, on the debt that this country uh, seems to find itself in, and uh, maybe we might have a few questions for the good professor in that line of work, too. But did you know there's 2,700 rules of the Social Security system? How many do you know? When it comes to getting what you deserve, this deck of 2,700-plus is stacked against you, literally, and that could cost you thousands, maybe tens of thousands every year. In a moment... We're going to bring Professor Kotlikoff on. He has got a new book out, Get What's Yours, The Secrets of Maxing Out Your Social Security. We will talk about that with the professor. But you've earned it. You know, you have two choices, do nothing and take significantly less than what you've earned, or get some help and get every penny you've got coming to you. So stay tuned for the Social Security's top five secrets and their top five gotchas. If you've been a listener of our program for the past few years, you know that I have done a lot of Social Security workshops in this area, trying to educate you folks about how to get more benefits from your Social Security. KC, our morning host, has done a fantastic job of putting the word out and getting folks into these workshops. I'd say over the course of the last couple years, we have educated more than a 1,000 folks, and I've helped them find you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I've always said this, I have yet to be able to find a couple less than $50,000. I throw that out there as a challenge to everybody. I want to see if I can't help you find the most Social Security benefit uh, that you can get. Most of the time, you know, we're averaging over $100,000 per couple in extra benefits. And if you're a professional couple, why, it's over $200,000. A little bit about my guest today. Lawrence Kotlikoff received his B.A. in economics from the University of Pennsylvania and his Ph.D. in economics from Harvard University. He's a professor of economics at Boston University, and he's also a research associate of the National Bureau of Economic Research, president of economic security planning, and the director of the Tax Analysis Center. So welcome in, Dr. Kotlikoff. Great to be with you, Doug. Well, I'm so glad that you uh, were able to take the time out to be with us today. Uh, You know, everyone, I guess we presume it wants to get what's theirs, yet some people just, they don't do anything about it. It's puzzling to me because, I, like I said in in the opening, you know, I've done so many uh, workshops and I've, I've done so many Social Security optimizations for people, but, you know, We find that people still are filing early at 62, uh, and they're leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on on the table. Why do you think that is? I think our focus is on death. I think our focus is on getting sick and dying. We're very, very anxious about that. uh, uh, and, And so we're concerned not about the real risk of life, which is living, but rather we're focused on death, and we're sure we're going to die early because we're scared to death of death. So we think we better take our benefits immediately because we're going to die tomorrow. But the reality is that you can't count on dying tomorrow. You can't count on dying on time, namely at your life expectancy. You have to plan for the worst-case scenario, which is not dying, because if you die, you're going to be in heaven, and you won't need any money. The worst-case scenario is living to 100 and eating cat food. So... Social Security is the um, country's primary provider of longevity insurance, insurance against living to 100, and people just don't seem to understand how to uh, value that insurance benefit. Uh, It's it's like we, you know, suppose we didn't have any homeowners insurance. All of a sudden, the government were to come along and say, "Look, uh, for a decent price, you can uh, buy." Full coverage. Well, everybody would buy it. Everybody would understand it's a huge value to them. But here, full coverage is waiting, to, in some, in many cases, waiting to collect 
uh, till 70 to collect 76% higher retirement benefits rather than taking them immediately at 62. And you're opening a check at 76% larger every month, month in, month out, between 70 and possibly 100. That's 30 years. That's 30 times 12 checks. That's a lot of checks, 360 checks uh, that are going to be larger by 76%. So there's that longevity aspect of uh, Social Security, the, the insurance aspect that people aren't valuing. The other aspect is they're not getting uh, straight all the benefits that they can collect. There's something like 10 different benefits that Social Security is offering, and people are generally eligible for more than just one benefit, more than just a retirement benefit. So you have to figure out, first of all, you have to be patient. That's rule one in our book, Get What's Yours. The second rule is to understand all the benefits that are available to you. The third rule is to be strategic in terms of the timing to make sure that you get all the benefits you can, and that requires taking uh, in most cases, one benefit early and letting the other benefit grow and then flipping onto it. So it is an extremely complicated system. There are 2,728 rules in the Social Security Handbook, but then there's literally hundreds of thousands of rules about those rules in the program operating manual system. So I keep learning new things. I've been writing about Social Security for three years on the PBS NewsHour weekly column on Monday uh, answering questions, but Still, I'm, uh, I'm learning myself. <laughs> Even after I wrote the book, I, I learned a few new things. If you just joined us, we're talking today with uh, Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff. He's just authored a new book, uh, Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. And yeah, I actually, I co- Doug, I want to make clear that I co-authored the book with uh, two great uh, co-authors. One is Paul Solomon. He's the PBS NewsHour economics correspondent. Anybody who watched this has been watching, like, uh, you know, McNeil Lair show for years. We'll know Paul Som, and he's been on for for a long time. And then the other uh, co-author is Phil Muller, who's a uh, personal finance columnist of long standing. Well, very good. You know, you mentioned just a moment ago that people don't understand all the different rules and the complexities. One of the things that just amazes me, it, it, I've been finding out that about, I'd say half of the folks I sit down with don't even realize there's such a thing as a spousal benefit. They don't know about that. They don't know that they're eligible potentially for uh, widower benefits. The reason the book got, was uh, written was really the result of my having taking a break and playing tennis with Paul. And I started asking Paul, who's a little bit older than me, about what he was going to do on Social Security. He said, don't bother me. I've got it all figured out. I'm going to wait till 70. My wife and I are going to wait till 70 to collect our retirement benefits. I said, do you, um, uh, do you know about spouse benefits? He said, no, I can't get any spouse benefits. I said, do you know about spouse benefits? This went on for about 10 times until he finally asked me, what do I know? And I told him how to make $50,000. It took me about a minute or two to explain this to him. And uh, he had to buy dinner as a result. <laughs> then I had uh, a dinner with a friend, another friend who's a professor at Brown, who uh, knew nothing about widower benefits. I made him $120,000 in the course of about two minutes. Uh, just He was sure that he couldn't collect anything on his deceased wife, uh, but that was not the case. Uh, he was just about to reach full retirement age. Uh, and I said, look, what you should do is wait till 70 to collect your own retirement benefit, but start at 66 when you're no longer going to be hit by the earnings test to take your uh, widow's ben- widow benefit, which, since his wife was a high earner, amounts to $30,000 a year. So that's what he's currently collecting, an extra $30,000 a year that he knew nothing about. And uh, he doesn't so much need the money, but his, it's available for his kids. He can leave it, give it to his kids. Uh, his wife worked, uh, you know, for, since age 16, every single job. She had to pay 12.4% of her pay, she an employer, to the government for Social Security. And then she passed this away at, at 58, tragically. Fantastic lady. But she had bought, in effect, she had bought uh, life insurance, in effect, as part of what she had been paying those taxes for. And uh, Glenn, her husband, knew nothing about it. So... Another friend, I made uh, like $20,000 in child benefits. He's 68. He got married late. late had, he's got kids who are still in high school. Knew nothing about child benefits. All he had to do was file for his own retirement benefits, suspend its collection. Bingo, the kids got are getting uh, child benefits. So the list goes on. And as you, as you know, in your own practice, you're doing this. 
Uh, I also have, I want to make uh, make everybody aware that I have this software company, and we have a program called MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com, which in very tricky cases helps you figure out exactly what to do when. So it's not just a matter of reading the book. And um, the, the book is like uh, the basics, and it's written in a way that's supposed to be fun and, and entertaining, because not so much because I'm fun and entertaining, but because my co-authors are fun and entertaining. Dr. Kotlikoff, we are up against a break, so hold your thoughts, and we'll come right back to that when we get back. This is the Wealth Guardians on 94.5 WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. This is the Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray on 94.5 WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. Today, my guest is Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff, economics professor at Boston University and co-author of Get What Your Is Yours, The so- Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. You know, Dr. Kotlikoff, before the uh, break, we were talking about... Um, how you were able to find some monies for uh, some of these friends of yours, and you even won a dinner bet doing it. Uh, I think, for me, when it really struck me between the eyes was about, I guess it's been three years ago now, I had uh, in my Charlotte office, and I've told this story on the radio before too, but it just really it, it just hit me so hard. I had a, a, an engineer who just retired. He was full retirement age, and he comes in, he tells me this story, he says, yeah, I just went to file. They tell me that I'm going to get uh, $2,400 a month, and, and I've got to uh, share that with my wife. And I didn't think too much of the way he said that because you know, I share my money with my wife, too. And um, so I do his optimization report, and he comes back in, a, in about a week or so to, to get it. And I said, Mike, here, here it is. Yes, you get your $2,400. And, and your wife, who had been a stay-at-home mom, pretty much all the time, so she didn't have her own work record uh, benefit. Um, so I told him, I said, and she gets a spousal benefit of about half a year, about $1,200. So he looks at me kind of strange and funny, and he says, no, I, I get my $2,400, and, and and I've got to share that with her. And, and I said, what? I said, who told you that? And he goes, well, they did down at the Social Security office. And I said, no, Mike, there's this thing called a spousal benefit, and your wife didn't have a work record of her own, so now she gets half a year's. So he sits there, he stares at me, he's quiet for like five seconds. He goes, you mean I get $2,400 and she gets another 1200 And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, well, does that mean i got to go back down there? And I said, yeah, and this time take her with you. <laughs> so... You know. Yeah, yeah, I know. The, the folks at Social Security are very dangerous uh, to talk to. You, uh, I, I, my experience is that 40% of the time they are giving either the absolutely wrong answer, and they're very assist- insistent, they're very adamant that they know exactly what's right, even when they're telling you exactly what's wrong, uh, or they're giving you incomplete information or uh, or just bad advice. So I would not ask Social Security anything. I would tell them what to do. And that's where the book comes in, Get What's Yours, because it is a guidebook for how to get what's yours and make sure you don't get screwed up by them because there are lots of gotchas. There's a, we have a whole chapter on 25 gotchas. There, there are minefields that Social Security has laid to make sure that people don't get what's theirs because uh, there are all kinds of crazy rules that uh, if you trip up on, you won't will not get a, a full spouse benefit. You can easily get get that taken away from you um, just because you didn't uh, file for the right thing at the right time. So, you know, your, your friend, I mean, suppose your your friend was, uh, your, your client was 66 taking his retirement benefit, for example, and his wife was 62 and had her own work record. And she goes and uh, says, I'd like to get a spouse benefit on my husband's work record. I know it's going to be reduced because I'm going to taking it early, but I still want to take it. And they say, fine. So they may not tell her that what's going to happen is that they'll give her the spousal benefit, but they'll also force her to take benefit. 
and then they'll look at the two benefits and give her the larger of the two. Yep. And most likely it will be the retirement benefit of hers that will be larger than her spouse benefit, so they won't give her just the larger of the two. She'll not get any spouse benefit whatsoever. And then they will furthermore reduce her retirement benefit because she's taking it early at 62. In other words, that's, as you know, Doug, it's called deeming, where you're forced to take both benefits early if you take one of the two benefits. And that's one of the of Social Security's largest uh, gotchas, largest minefields. And we're trying to keep people from doing that. Now, if this lady had waited till full retirement age, this hypothetical wife that I'm uh, of your client, uh, if she were to wait till full retirement age, then she can collect just a spousal benefit without being forced to take the retirement benefit because the deeming, the deeming ends at full retirement age. So at that point, you, she could take just her spousal benefit, which would equal half of his full retirement benefit with no reduction. And then at 70, she can collect her own retirement benefit, which, is, again, is going to be 76% higher than if she takes it at 62. So that's the um, – uh, so this, this strategy, the timing is critically important. What, what do you do when so that you don't fall into Social Security's traps? You know, I can't tell you how many times I have uh, done the report for for folks, and then they come back to me a few weeks or a month later and say they went down to the uh, Social Security Administration and were told, well, you can't do that, or that's not right. This is how you got to do it. Uh, and, you know, it makes me look like I've got egg on my face, but, you know, we know what the rules are, and we, we, we run the... Uh, these re, uh, reports based on on uh, on the rules, and and uh, we haven't been wrong yet with the software that we use. Now, I want to ask you, uh, Doctor. You were, before the break, you were talking about the software that you have out that's available. Uh, let's get more into that, and also, if you would tell tell me how we go about getting your your book, uh, get what's yours, the secrets to maxing out your Social Security. Okay, well, first on the book, it should be available in, in any local bookstore. I prefer people buy the book in the local bookstore because we need to support our local bookstores. But if you're for any reason you can't get there or they don't have it, uh, Barnes & Noble's either online or in the store or Amazon will have it. It's it's selling for 11 bucks or so, 12 bucks, 10 bucks somewhere in there. Uh, not expensive. It can make you, as you said, up to, you know, we, we start out with an example where uh, doing the right thing increases the household's benefit by $400,000. So it very much depends on the circumstance. That's a high-earning household that we were illustrating. But even if you're going to make $10,000, if it only costs you 10 bucks for the book, it's worth it. Our software, it's called MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Uh, we sell this to financial pl- planners like you, Doug, for 200 bucks a year, which uh, I think is probably a whole lot less than you're currently paying but we'll, I don't know what software you're using, but it's highly accurate, it's extreme, extremely uh, detailed. And for 40 bucks, individual households can buy it uh, and uh, and use it on their own. So, or they could, you know, they could use it on their own, come in and see you to confirm that uh, they're doing the right thing. Uh, it's always good to have your hand held in these things to make sure to triple check because. Uh, I've seen software out there that's that I would not use. I think is dangerous. For one thing, uh, let me just give you an example of the things that our software is concerned about, and, and the, the book tries to point out, which is that if you go to Social Security's websites, or you call them on the phone, or you go into their office and ask them, let's say you're 55, and you say, "What will my benefit be when I retire? And what, what will be my full retirement benefit?" and you're going to get the wrong answer because they're going to assume that the country will never experience any inflation in the future and any average wage growth in the economy, both of which are important factors for determining your uh, future uh, retirement benefit. In addition, they're going to assume that if you're working now, you're going to work right through full retirement age, which may not be true. You may work longer than that or shorter than that. Uh, So, they can both underestimate by 20% or so or 30% or overestimate dramatically what benefit you're going to get. And then if you're a spouse, if you're plugging the wrong numbers into a software program that even does things correctly under the hood, then you're going to get – it's going to be garbage in, garbage out. In our software, what we do is we, we reverse engineer Social Security's benefit estimate. So if somebody – 
doesn't give us their earnings history, which is easy to you know cut and paste into our software. But if they don't want to do that and they just have a, their benefit estimate from Social Security, what we do is we go to the length of under the hood of reverse engineering it to make sure that we're coming up with the right benefit number for them so that uh, we don't systematically bias the strategy when you've got two spouses that are different ages, they can have differentially biased estimates coming from Social Security. So you can't even trust Social Security to give you the right benefit estimate. Now, how crazy is that? Well, it doesn't surprise me, and I do appreciate the tip because uh, I have to tell you, the software I use is considerably more expensive than yours, and I'm definitely going to check yours out. I appreciate that. I'd love to have you as a client. Um, (laughs) And we give a lot of customer support, too, for households as well as financial planners in terms of... Well, my office probably does 10 or more of these a week, so it's uh, I, I definitely use it. I'm a big believer in building a retirement income plan with the Social Security being optimized, and if that means leaning on retirement assets early in retirement, so be it. Where else are you going to get that guaranteed 8% plus cost of living adjustment increases every year, you know? Yeah, the, the other program I should tell people, you and others about, is we have uh, – uh, the main software program my company has is called ES Planner, E-S-P-L-A-N-N-E-R. So Social Security is not the only way to safely raise your living standard. There's other things like contributing more to a 401K or using a Roth versus a regular IRA uh, or deciding when you're going to start your withdrawals from your retirement account, when you're going to stop them, or downsizing your home or moving to a state where there's no income tax. Or buying an annuity that's um, inflation protected, fully prote- protected. There are lots of different ways to safely raise your living standard before you start engaging in trying to beat the stock market, or, or at least you know, basically you know, uh, make money through risky investing. So this program, ESPlanner.com, uh, is that uh, is available for the basic program is $149. Uh, the program that analyzes your investment risk is one. 99. And the cool thing about the software is it's based on economics uh, methodology, which is we economists are focused on people's living standards. So the program figures out what your living standard can be based on your resources, how much you're earning, what your assets are, what your 401ks are, et cetera. And uh, so we don't ask anybody what they want to spend, because if you ask me what I'd like to spend in retirement, it's a billion dollars a minute. That's what I'd like to spend. So it's a ridiculous, crazy answer, but that's the standard question that uh, the industry is asking people, well, how much do you want to spend in retirement? My answer is a billion a minute, uh, or a second, actually. But our software says no. If we know what people have in resources, including Social Security, we can figure out internally, using the right math, what they can spend every year such that they have the same living standard through time. And then within a few seconds, you can figure out how to raise that living standard safely, whether it's optimizing Social Security or, or optimizing over your 401k withdrawal timing or uh, doing a Roth conversion, for example, you can see very quickly whether uh, any of these moves will actually benefit you in terms of lowering the taxes you have to pay or raising the benefits you're going to get from Uncle Sam. Well, Professor, we're up against another break here, and uh, hold that thought. We'll come right back to it. But I'll tell you, you'll have to be the federal government yourself to spend a billion a second. This is the Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray on 94.5 WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. This is the Wealth Guardian Show. My name is Doug Ray, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom. You need to live life your way. Today's special guest is Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff. He is the co-author of Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. We've been talking with the good professor today about a lot of uh, the different rules and regulations of Social Security. You know, I'm a big proponent of of, uh, of helping folks maximize their benefits. Uh, we've been saying all along here that um, there are some strategies that you can take advantage of to create an extra fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars more Social Security benefit in your lifetime. 
So speaking of that, Professor, what are the main strategies for getting what's yours? Well, the three general rules in the book are be patient. Uh, The second rule, that's number one, because there's a huge payoff to waiting in many cases to take your benefits. Uh, The second rule is understand all your benefits. There are divorcee benefits, benefits available for divorcees who are married for 10 or more years. There's uh, divorce your widow benefits, there's child benefits, there's benefits for, uh, pa- for parents uh, of children who are young or disabled or disabled before 22. There's benefits for your parents. If you pass away and you've been supporting your parents, taking them as a tax deduction, for example, uh, they're older, you pass away, they can get 82.5% of your full retirement benefit. So there are all these benefits you need to know about. That's rule number two. Rule number three is uh, timing, making sure you don't fall into any of Social Security's traps, whether they're the deeming traps or other traps that they have laid for you. And uh, so being strategic, understanding uh, how to avoid their traps. And But those are the general rules. Then specific strategies, well, it very much depends on the household. So I'll, I'll give you an example. If you uh, – I – ran a case the other day of uh, a husband who's about 62 and the wife is 45. She had a high earnings up till now, but her child is, their child is disabled. And he's thinking about taking his retirement benefit early. Well, our software ran him through our software and it says, yes, he should take his retirement benefit early in order to activate a benefit for the child as well as a benefit for the mom who's no longer working she can collect what's called a child and care spousal benefit. So the two of them together can collect benefits subject to the family benefit maximum. And it makes more sense for him to take a reduced retirement benefit right now at 62 uh, as soon as he gets there. And uh, then at uh, for retirement age, he can suspend his benefits, start it up again at 70 at a 32% higher level based due to his suspending it. Um, that's not going to give him as high a benefit as he would have had had he never done any of this and just waited till 70 to collect his retirement benefit. But uh, it will lower his benefits over his lifetime, but will raise the uh, wife and child's benefits over their lifetime. So the total family benefits will go up. So our software in this case showed, you know, an extra you know, $70,000 from them uh, following the optimal strategy. It's a $40 program, and to make $70,000 for 40 bucks, it's worth it. And it's very, in this particular case, there are about 10 different benefits. There are exactly 10 different benefits that the, the uh, husband and wife and the kid has to have to collect. The child first collects on the dad's record. Then the mom, when she retires, he, he collects on her record. Then the dad dies, he collects the survivor child benefit on the dad's record, and then the mom dies, he collects on the mom's record. And because he's going to be disabled for the rest of his life, and it's very important to make sure that a disabled child has some protection and, and income coming in. So um, these things are, you know, we talk about this as just money, but there are real lives involved here and real living standards. And, uh, uh, you know, people have, for example, they've tried to get their kids to work who are disabled, and they've said, go take a job. Now, if the, kid, if the kids who are disabled earn a little bit too much money, they were, let's say they're disabled at birth. They're now 25. The parents somehow arranged to get them uh, a job. They work. They earn more than like $13,000 this year. Uh, well, they can lose their rights to child benefits in the future and to child survivor benefits in the future forever, just by earning too much money in a given month or year, uh, because they just didn't know the rules that if you, uh, if you were disabled and then you become undisabled because you've earned too much money and now you want to go and get a claim that you're disabled, well, you're a child who was not continually disabled from before age 20, from age 22 on, and you no longer qualify. So that's an example of a trap that Social Security has laid for people. And that's even a trap that I didn't know about uh, when we we wrote the book. That's not even in the book. There's 25 gotchas, but this is a pretty big gotcha that I found out about even after I wrote the book, and I included it in my PBS NewsHour column. So 
in the next version of the book, the next edition, we'll have that one in there, too. Well, I have to tell you, you educated me on something I didn't know today. I appreciate that. If you just tuned in, you're listening to The Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray. And our guest today, our special guest is Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff. And we're talking about how to maximize your Social Security benefits. You know, um, Professor, the Social Security Administration will not tell people how to do any of this. Do you have an opinion uh, as to why they won't? Well, they're told they do tell you what to do, and sometimes uh, they're, they're not supposed to. They do give you advice. They sometimes are very insistent, and sometimes they force you to do things that you didn't ask to do. And I, I'll give you an example. I was uh, seeing my dentist. Uh, he's about 71. I asked him what he did on Social Security because uh, I thought he was younger than 71. He said, oh, I played it smart. I waited till 70 to take my retirement benefit. And uh, uh, he had screwed up on his spouse benefit, but we'll leave that to the side. I said, okay. Uh, so then he said, yeah, I went in about three months early before full retirement, before age 70, and I asked for my age 70 benefit, and they were really nice to me. They gave me retroactive benefits for six months. I said, uh-oh. What they did is they really screwed you. What they did is they uh, um, reduced uh, your benefit by uh, by nine months in terms of delayed retirement credits. They reduced your – they took away nine months of delayed retirement credits because what they did is they said, well, you're three months before age 70 – and we're going to f- force you to take your uh, benefits retroactively another six months. So that's three months plus six months is nine months of delayed retirement credits that they took away from him without his really understanding. He agreed to, to getting retroactive benefits. He didn't think it was going to cost him anything. They didn't explain it to him. And they actually have the power to do that unless you affirmatively write on black and white that you do not want retroactive benefits. They can give them to you. We I found a uh, speaking with our technical expert in our company uh, who used to work for Social Security, he said, well, Social Security, these agents have the ability to, on their own, decide whether or not to force you to take or to give you retroactive benefits unless you write in black and white that you don't want to take them. So that's another trap that Social Security is laying. That's amazing. And you've probably never heard of that one either, Doug, right? No, I haven't. That's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and... But it's a true story, and uh, I read about it in my PBS NewsHour column, and, uh, and uh, again, it's something I learned about after I read the book. So I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah. well, don't we all? Professor, we've got yeah. about five minutes left, and I want to switch gears a little bit. Not only are you an expert in Social Security, but you've become pretty well-known nationally uh, in terms of uh, writing about the debt that this country's built up over the years, and... Uh, I guess my biggest question about that, because I have been a huge critic of of what's been going on with um, the quantitative easing and so forth. Are we at a point of no return? Well, I think if we continue electing the politicians that we are electing, we are at a point. Our children are at a point of no return because all this is going to land on their heads. We have a fiscal gap separating the value in the present, the present value of all the projected future expenditures by the federal government, less all the projected future taxes. So this is the net fiscal gap of $210 trillion. And this is based on the Congressional Budget Office's projections of expenditures and taxes into the future. So $210 trillion is vastly larger than the $13 trillion of official debt that's held by the public that hasn't been bought up by the Federal Reserve by they're printing tons and tons of money in the last seven years, eight years. So, uh, and, and what's called quantitative easing, but they're really just easing the burden of uh, raising taxes or cutting spending on Congress's part. So, our fiscal gap is two hundred ten trillion. That's really our true debt. The official debt's thirteen trillion. So, why is most of the debt off the books? Because of bookkeeping. Because Congress has chosen to call certain liabilities official and certain liabilities uh, they don't record at all. So, for example, the commitment to pay you your Social Security uh, benefits, Doug, you're going to be collecting benefits. I'll be collecting benefits. You're going to be collecting Medicare. So why? The present value, the value today of those future benefits 
is not recorded as a liability on the books of the federal government. And so we're focused, the politicians are focusing everybody's attention on the official debt and the deficit and missing the entire forest, which is this $210 trillion fiscal gap that grew $5 trillion between last year and this year. And that, that puts our country at a 58% underfunding position. In other, in other words, we need to raise every single federal tax immediately and permanently by 58%. Ouch. Uh, to pay off that, to get that fiscal gap down to zero. Or we could cut every single dollar of expenditure between now until the end of time by 33%, again, to get that fiscal gap to zero. That's how screwed we are. We're in far, far worse shape than Detroit was when they went bankrupt. Just to give you an illustration, to, get, to put this in perspective, we're close to Greece with respect to our true overall fiscal position. And it's just uh, bookkeeping that's been... Uh, used to hide the truth by all uh, administrations from over the post-war period, starting with Eisenhower. I mean, they, Eisenhower doubled the scale of Social Security, and all those extra obligations were never put on the books. Well, Professor Kolokoff, we are again up against another break, and I want to thank you so much for being on our program today. We've learned a lot. I appreciate it. I will definitely get your book. Uh, probably even get a bunch of books and hand them out to uh, to new clients and so forth. But uh, let's try to do this again one more time. Uh, love to do it. Thanks so much. Well, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. This is the Wealth Guardian Show on 94.5 WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station. This is the Wealth Guardian Show, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom. You need to live life your way. Wow, what a great show we had today with uh, Professor Kotlikoff. I I tell you, he he schooled me today, and I thought I knew a lot about Social Security, but I learned a few things from the good professor, and I encourage you to go out uh, and get his book, Get What's Yours, The Secrets of Maxing Out Your Social Security by Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff. The other thing he said at the end of the show, I, t- I twisted, the, turned the gears on him a little bit there, and, and I asked him about the debt and so forth and, and where we are, where we at a point of no return, and uh, he pretty much said so. Uh, I mean, he said basically what we would have to do right now in order to pay down this debt is increase every tax we have 58% permanently. And uh, I just, whoa, I just couldn't believe that. That is that is incredible. You know, I ask folks when they come in to meet me if they think taxes are going to go up in the future, and just about everybody has, has said inevitably they do. You know, we look at uh, the, the national debt. It's over $18 trillion now, but that's just what they want to admit. That's not the unfunded liability. As Professor Kotlikoff said, our unfunded liability is well over $200 trillion. Let me ask you something. Where are we going to get the money? You know, I, I just it just baffles my mind. One of the things that I keep telling everybody is this. You need to try to create as much tax-free income for your retirement years as possible because taxes inevitably are going to be going up. Um When I hold workshops and seminars, I like to ask the question, do you know what the highest marginal tax rate has ever been in this country? And most people have no idea. But actually, right after World War II, it reached a high of 90%. And then, as early as a few years ago, when Ronald Reagan was sworn into office, the high marginal tax rate was still 70%. Do you know what the current highest marginal rate is now? It's 39.5%. So do you see we have plenty of room to go higher in the future? So to me, as a retirement income planner, it makes so much sense to talk about creating tax-free income for your future needs. And one way to do that is Roth conversions. I'm a big believer in that. 
And a lot of people come to me and they say, well, my CPA says at my age it probably doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the thing about CPAs, and I love them to death, but CPAs kind of operate with with a tax blinder on. I mean, they are so focused in uh, eliminating as much tax as they possibly can off of your return, it's hard for them to see the forest for the trees. They can't look 10, 15 years into the future and see a potential 55% marginal tax rate and what that would mean to you if you had taxable income coming out of those IRAs. So, you know, one of the things you can do is you can call our office and set an appointment. The number is 336-391-3409. And come in and let's just sit down and talk about this because I can show you some ways to create uh, some tax-free income that may not be uh, as difficult as you think. For example, we, we have a strategy we call a bracket bump. That's basically converting... Uh, your uh, IRA to a Roth IRA uh, over a period of time. You don't do it all in one year because that would pop you into a higher tax bracket. But what we think we would do here is take every year a piece of your IRA, convert it to a Roth to bump you up underneath uh, that uh, next marginal tax rate. And what that does over time is it gets your conversion to Roth done at the most efficient tax rates possible. One thing I like to tell people, if we know that taxes have been 90%, as high as 90% in the past, and we know now taxes are 39.5%, that's the highest rate we pay now, can't we say that taxes are on sale now? So shouldn't we take advantage of that sale and start a strategy of converting some of these tax future tax bombs uh, into tax-free shelters for us. You know, there's there's a lot of ways to skin that cat, folks. And I I have another one I'd I'd love to show you. I can show you a method that we've employed to be able to convert a third of your IRA and do it tax-free. And uh, I'm not going to tell you that one on the radio. You're going to have to come in to see me to get that one. Number is 336 Three nine one, thirty four zero nine. You know, another thing I talk quite a bit about in in my retirement planning uh, is long term care, and I, and I believe sincerely that uh, no retirement plan is a good one unless it uh, has a a, a long term care plan. And you might say, well, why? Well, statistics are why we are absolutely seeing an explosion in the need for for long term care. The fact of the matter is, at least in 70% of the time, at least one of a couple will have to have some sort of long-term care in in their lifetime. And long-term care is not cheap. And I ask everybody when they meet with me, I say, do you have long-term care insurance? And I'd say probably nine times out of ten, they say no. And I ask them why. And they say this to me. Either one or two things or both. They'll say, well, it's too expensive. It is. But I'll tell you what, if you have a long-term care need, that's even more expensive. But the other thing they say is this. They say, you know, not only is it expensive, but also if we buy this long-term care insurance and we never use it, never need it, then we've wasted all that money. And I get it. I understand that. You know, the analogy is your automobile insurance. Now, that's mandated by law. you got to have it, but, you know, you pray you never get into a uh, a wreck and have to use it. So if you go through life, you never have a uh, an automobile wreck, and, and, and you've paid all those premiums for nothing. Well, long-term care is obviously different. It's an option. You don't have to have it. But thanks to the Pension Protection Act of 2006, there's other ways to get long-term care insurance without having that fear of never using it. We now have plans we can put together for you so that if you don't ever need long-term care, and believe me, I pray you don't, then there is a way to either get your money back or it will pass on to a beneficiary as a death benefit, completely tax-free to them. So let me give you an example. I've got a a, a 72-year-old widow that I'm working with, And she has $200,000 that uh, is doing nothing in the bank, making absolutely zero. 
So she wants it to be safe, and she wants the potential to get a better return on it. At the same time, she's got a small long-term care plan, but it's not going to be enough. We have what we call a combination plan that does everything. It's safe, has the ability to grow the money, and it provides a death benefit, and it provides long-term care and home health care benefits. So in her situation at 72, she puts $200,000 into this plan. Immediately, the company gives her a 12% bonus. That's $24,000 added right to the plan. She has an immediate death benefit of $310,000, which if she goes through life and never touches this, uh, it will pass to her beneficiaries tax-free. But more importantly, it also creates a long-term care monthly benefit of $8,600 for 36 months or a home health care benefit of $5,162. And those are tax-free payments to you if you ever need it for home health care. If she lives to life expectancy and never touches this stuff, with the average growth rate that this account has provided, she will have a death benefit equal to $401,000. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? She has complete access to her money. If she wanted to dip in there and get $25,000 out for who knows what, a nice trip, a car, whatever, she could do it. And if she's decided one day, hey, I just don't want this account anymore, she can always get out at least what she put into the thing, at least what she put into it, the $200,000, possibly more. So there's a lot of ways that we can design long-term care now. Here's another example. A lot of you have started to inherit IRAs from your, your parents. Well, you know, as a non-spousal beneficiary of an IRA, you're going to have to take out your own required minimum distribution. Many of you don't need that to live off of. Why not take that RMD that you have to take anyway, and let's create a long-term care plan for you that covers all of your needs, but at the same time, it has some of these benefits that if you never use it for long-term care, you can either use the cash value build up for yourself or pass it on to your beneficiary in the form of a tax-free uh, benefit for them. So thanks to that Pension Protection Act of 06, there's a lot of ways we can skin this cat now. And guess what? Those premium payments are contractually guaranteed never to increase. It's not like these standard long-term care plans you may have looked at in the past. They really are uh, a new and, and better uh, way to, uh, to create the long-term care that uh, you hopefully don't need but unfortunately may need in the future. Well, we want to thank you folks for tuning in today. We enjoy doing this show, and we like having guests like Professor Kotlikoff. And uh, you have been listening to The Wealth Guardian Show. My name is Doug Ray, and this is 94.5 WPTI, the Piedmont's News Talk and Sports Station.